And today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things that I like to get done through the winter months. Clearing and tidying. So on the beds out here, there's plenty that I can be starting now to, to cut down, although we've still got some beautiful flowers here in the flower bed, so I'm going to leave a few of those. But anything that's finished or died back, I can start to clear. You can see I've got some beds clear here already, but there's still plenty to do. And that goes the same for inside that polytunnel. Start clearing those beds and getting them ready for spring. Weeding and mulching. So again, still preparation for the spring. So getting out anything you don't want in these beds and mulching over. So I use all sorts of mulches, whatever you can get your hands on. That could be cardboard, grass clippings if you've still got some, there's still a, maybe a cut or so left on some people's gardens, leaves, compost, any good mulching material, get that over your beds. And that's really going to help with the combination of enriching that soil and also suppressing those weeds. Path maintenance. So you might have lovely neat grass pathways and you can do some edging and give them one last cut. I've got these bark pathways. So maintenance of those could be raking off any of the top surface that's actually rotted down too much. And that makes a great mulch for the actual beds and then popping fresh bark on top. But for those areas that aren't so rotted, I can just top them up. Seed sorting and planning. So go through your seed tins and boxes and bags, however you store your seeds, go through them and make a list of what you've got so you know ahead of season what you've already got and what you may or may not need to buy. Tool checking and maintenance. And that can be as simple as this dibber, which is absolutely filthy and needs a good clean and making sure it's dry before I store it away in the shed to all our other tools, anything with moving parts may need taking apart or certainly cleaning and oiling and any other tools that we use to be cleaned and then popped away so they're ready for use. Some of them probably won't get much use between now and spring, some may, but at least everything has had a good old clean and service if necessary. Now's a great time to get inside your shed and have a really good sort and tidy out. Get rid of anything you don't think you're going to need. You could always give something away, free cycle it, or if it is really done for, maybe it's time to get rid of it completely. But go through your shed, have a good old sort out, put everything back neatly so you know where everything is when you need them. And also by keeping your shed neat and tidy, you're less likely to have problems with rodents and pests. And if you have a polytunnel or a greenhouse, now's the time that you'll notice that you've got quite a lot of algae and green buildup on both the outside and the inside. And now's the time that you can give it a really good clean. Now, some people will wait till the spring to do that. But with my polytunnel, because I'm still growing through the winter months, by clearing away the algae and the green and any dirt on either side of that polythene, it means that we are getting less light now and I want all available light to be penetrating through to give my plants the best chance. So by cleaning it as we're going into the winter months, anything I'm growing over the winter has a better chance. Of course, if I were to have it standing empty, then I could leave that job until the spring. My raspberry canes were an autumn fruiting variety, so now's the time I'm going to chop them back. So I've taken away the netting that was on the top and I've started chopping those down. So cutting them back hard now so that they can regenerate in the spring and give me some fruit next autumn. And that's the same for anything that you can be pruning at this time of the year. Get those secateurs out and get pruning. And now's the time after taking some lovely strawberry runners from my strawberry bed from the existing plants that are all really established now. I'm going to get this netting off now because I haven't got any fruit so there's no worry of the birds. I'm going to give it a good weed and then I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to remove some of the established plants. I'm going to replace those with my new plants and that's a really good way that I'm going to have strawberries coming all the time that are good because what tends to happen when your plants get to about two years old you're not going to get the volume of strawberries from them so by keep replacing each year you're going to have some plants that are older some that are new but they're never going to get older than two years so you're always going to have a bountiful harvest from them now i've already got my overwintering onions in but there's still time for you to get any onions and garlic and even leek 
into the ground now. So I have some leek seedlings that I've moved out, but if you've got a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you could start some seeds off or even start them off on a windowsill indoors, and then you can get your leeks into the ground. But certainly there's still time to get your garlic in if you're growing it this year and your onion sets. So for me, I enjoy things through the winter months just as much as I enjoy the spring and summer. So I've still got a few bits and pieces growing, but I equally enjoy the tidying and the sorting and the clearing. So those are my top 10 things that I'm gonna be doing through the winter months in my garden. Let me know in the comments below what you're gonna be getting up to. As ever, thank you for joining me. There's a video coming up on the screen right now that I think you'll enjoy, so please go ahead and watch that.